Hey guys, in this quick video, I wanna to talk to you about how to correct chronically cold hands and feet or cold extremities. Cold hands and feet, as well as a cold nose or cold extremities, is one of the major symptoms that you're gonna see or run into if you are experiencing hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. And there's actually a very simple explanation for why hypothyroid people experience cold extremities or cold hands and feet and are generally cold intolerant. And this is simply due to the fact that the thyroid gland is actually what regulates your heart rate, it regulates your body temperature, and it regulates circulation. So when the thyroid gland is low, as I've mentioned in many videos before, all of these faculties start to shut down. And what tends to happen under hypothyroidism is there's an inefficient amount of thyroid hormone being produced, and this is buffered by an increased rise of stress hormone, specifically cortisol and adrenaline. So something I talk about in the Perfect Thyroid course is the relationship between the adrenals and thyroid. Basically, these two systems don't really work at the same time. They sort of work in tandem, where if the thyroid gland is functioning optimally, your adrenal glands tend to sit quietly in the background and only come into play or into action when the thyroid hormone is low or the thyroid gland isn't functioning properly, then the adrenals turn on in a sort of state of stress or an emergency state to produce adrenaline and cortisol to compensate for the low cellular energy production that you see in hypothyroid. So if you've ever been scared or experienced you know, a temporary burst of stress, then you know the effects that cortisol and adrenaline can have on your body. You have a short burst of energy, your heart starts to beat really fast, you tend to sweat maybe, but it's all in a way that is, again, artificial or superficial, meaning that it's not really the preferred way that your body wants to increase energy or circulation or your heart rate. And it usually comes with adverse side effects. So usually the energy, the increased heart rate, the increased circulation you feel from adrenaline and cortisol are not very comfortable. They feel almost uncomfortable and they make you uneasy and are usually accompanied by some level of anxiety. And this is because although the adrenal glands can keep the heart rate high and the blood circulating under stress when the thyroid is low, the adrenaline and cortisol will not support the proper production of cellular energy. So in other words, adrenaline and cortisol do not support proper metabolic function. They will increase your heart rate maybe superficially, but it's not supporting the production of ATP and cellular energy. However, the thyroid gland will keep the heart rate generally high around 80 to 88 beats per minute and the body temperature around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But it will also support the proper delivery of oxygen and glucose to your cells so that way your cells can produce ATP or cellular energy. However, adrenaline and cortisol will not support this process that is referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. If anything, it will impair it because cortisol can actually block the cellular utilization of glucose, which makes your cells less capable of producing ATP ATP or energy. And this leads to a cascade of chemical reactions and hormonal reactions that ultimately lead to low energy, sickness, and stress. So although adrenaline and cortisol might artificially increase your heart rate to cope with stress, they do not support proper energy production or the production of biological energy and are in many ways directly responsible for the long list of negative symptoms that you see in hypothyroidism. And related to this video, it is actually high levels of adrenaline that are responsible for the cold hands and feet that you see in hypothyroidism. So although adrenaline might temporarily increase the heart rate, it's going to impair your your body's ability to produce carbon dioxide, which is a key substance for vasodilating your blood vessels and allowing proper blood flow to and from the body. So it's actually adrenaline that contributes to cold extremities and the downregulation of the body temperature. So in summary, the reason that people experience cold hands and cold feet and under hypothyroidism is because under hypothyroidism, there's an increased production of stress hormones, adrenal stress hormones known as cortisol and adrenaline, which 
temporarily increase the heart rate, but over the long term impair normal and healthy blood circulation to and from the extremities. So from the feet and hands and the nose and the top of the head to the heart and back and forth. So with all this being said, the real secret to correcting cold hands and cold feet is to restore normal thyroid function and specifically lower the production of adrenaline. And fortunately, there are some simple things that you can do to actually immediately, almost within minutes, bring back up your body temperature and your heart rate rate from a thyroid driven perspective by lowering adrenaline. So one of the key things I usually recommend to people that are experiencing cold hands and cold feet on a sort of anecdotal level or a short term basis is to utilize salt as a supplement. So if you're experiencing cold hands and cold feet, you'll notice that just taking a quarter teaspoon of salt, maybe a little bit more, in a glass of fresh orange juice. And the combination of those healthy sugars and the orange juice, the fructose, which will stimulate the conversion of T4 into T3, and the salt, which will bring down your adrenaline levels, combined, both of these things will actually bring back up your body temperature. And you might notice within a half hour or an hour's time, or maybe even in a couple of minutes, depending on your unique physiology, that you start to warm up and that your heart rate increases at a normal pace and that your hands and feet become warmer and that your body becomes warmer overall. So this is a very simple thing that anyone can do and anyone can implement. And it's something I recommend doing on a daily basis or a regular basis if you're trying to correct hypothyroidism. Now really quick before we go, I'd just like to give one more tip for improving your body temperature and restoring blood flow to the hands and feet, warming up your extremities. And that is to practice certain breathing techniques that can bring down the production of stress hormones and bring up the production and concentration of carbon dioxide. So some Something that's important to understand is that the basic function of the thyroid hormone is to deliver oxygen to and from the cell. It assists in the cellular consumption of oxygen. But under stress, when the thyroid is low, this obviously becomes impaired and your cell can't get or consume adequate oxygen, which causes it to hyperventilate and become stressed. Now what's interesting is that you've probably noticed whenever you're stressed, your breathing also becomes impaired and you tend to more or less hyperventilate. So under stress, the breathing is short and shallow. It's usually from the chest. It's a bit more loud so you can sort of hear yourself huffing and puffing or gasping for air or sighing or even yawning may be a sign of hyperventilation. However, when you're relaxed and the stress hormones are low and the thyroid is working properly, you tend to hardly notice your breathing. It's more long and deep rather than shallow. You tend to breathe more from your belly or from your diaphragm and your breathing overall is almost unnoticeable and very relaxed to say the least. So something that can be very beneficial for correcting cold hands and feet is to practice breathing from a state of relaxation. So. You might notice that if you're cold all the time, if you pay attention to your breathing, it's a bit more shallow, it's a bit more, again, chest-driven, and just by consciously focusing on more deeper breaths, also breathing through the nose rather than the mouth, so taking a long breath or inhale, something that's not too loud or too exaggerated, and again, breathing from the belly can be a very simple way to bring down the production of stress hormones. In fact, there is research that has been done that has found that just a couple of deep breaths through the diaphragm, through the nose, can completely change your physiology and start bringing down the production of stress hormones. And this is key because when you're stressed out and the stress hormones are high, that thyroid is low, and that means that your capillaries are gonna tighten up, the carbon dioxide is going to be obviously lower, which means your blood flow is going to be restricted to and from the capillaries and your overall body temperature is going to decrease. So something as simple as practicing deep breathing through the nose, through the diaphragm, to the point where your body starts to relax can be incredibly beneficial for lowering stress, improving thyroid function, and ultimately improving your body temperature and the circulation to your hands and feet and extremities. So in summary, the things I'm gonna recommend on a short-term basis for improving the circulation to your hands and feet is that you take a quarter teaspoon of good quality salt and fresh squeezed orange juice, go sit somewhere relaxed and practice some of this deep breathing, maybe even hop online and research some deep diaphragmic breathing so that way you can learn how to do it properly. And you'll notice that in a couple of minutes or up to a half hour, depending again on your physiology and your practice, that your body temperature increases and your hands and feet become warmer. Now keep in mind, these are only a couple of methods 
to improve circulation and thyroid health. There are many factors that affect thyroid function, everything from the estrogen levels in your body to liver function, to the production of other stress hormones we've talked about, to dietary inadequacies and environmental stressors that could be slowing down thyroid function and resulting in poor circulation and cold hands and feet. So in addition to these tips, I'm gonna obviously recommend that you check out our Perfect Thyroid course, as I mentioned already earlier, to get a complete protocol for improving thyroid function. However, definitely implement these tips that I mentioned here now and let us know how they've worked for you in the comment section below. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And if you're interested in learning more beyond this YouTube channel, remember we do have an online wellness academy, a blog, and tonic herb shop with wonderful additional information resources, all which you can find in the description box below.